Hey, how's it going? So a couple of days ago, Charlie McDonald made a really good video about randomness, where basically he displayed that in probability, the previous results of a system have no effect on future results. For instance, if you're rolling a die and a six is rolled three times in a row, it does not make a six on the fourth roll any more or less likely. The odds of a six coming up are still one in six. And that would be completely accurate. That is, of course, if randomness existed, what? Boring science, boring science, boring science is the science of boring. <sighs> Randomness, it turns out, does not exist. Okay, so to begin with, first you need to know that once upon a time there was a man by the name of Isaac Newton who was so extraordinarily smart that he had to hold his brains in his hair, and he came up with classical physics, or what we call Newton's Laws of Motion. Now, Newton's first law states that an object in motion will stay in motion until acted upon by an outside force, and an object at rest will stay at rest until acted upon by an outside force. Now, that initially seems somewhat straightforward, but it has some pretty far-reaching implications. Basically, under Newtonian physics, it's helpful to think of the universe as a sort of massive machine, where every object in the universe, in motion or otherwise, is in that state as a result of all of the different forces acting upon it. Let's go back to our dice toss. Now, to the human observer, the results of the dice toss seem completely and totally random. But that's only because we don't know all of the input forces acting upon the die at that time. Let's break it down. Now, when the die is cast, it is initially met with the upward force of my thumb. However, it is also being affected by Earth's gravity pulling it back down. There's also air resistance and wind, and by Newton's law of universal gravitation, it's also being pulled on by the gravity of every other object in the universe, to varying degrees. And that's not to mention the near infinite number of other unknown forces acting upon the die at any given time. There are so many forces affecting the way the die lands that it is far too complex for us to predict the outcome. So, to the human observer, we call this phenomenon randomness. But it's important to note there is nothing random about it. A die cast in the exact same way with the exact same forces acting on it will land in the exact same way every time. And that's pretty cool. What this means is that every object in the universe, from the dust floating around your room to the stars in the sky, are where they are as the result of the infinite number of forces acting upon them. Or in other words, everything is nothing more or less than the result of all of the causes that came before it, and all of those causes had causes, and those causes before them had causes, etc, etc, ad infinitum. We call this clockwork universe theory, and also Newtonian determinism. And also mechanism. It's got a lot of names. His friends just call him Frank. It's a lot easier. Now, Frank gets really interesting when you apply him to human beings. Classical physics tells us that every object in the universe acts as the result of all of the forces that came before it. And as much as we'd like to deny it, human beings are a part of the universe. We're no exception. When you say the word I, you're probably not referring to your arms or your legs or your kidneys or your spine. What you're referring to is everything going on up here. You're referring to the symbiosis of all of the different neurons in your brain all firing at once, making decisions and choices and reminding you to breathe. <gasps> well, all of those neurons in your head are firing in precisely the order that they are for the exact same reasons that the Earth orbits the Sun and the die falls the way it does. It is the culmination of all of the forces that came before it. Everything that has ever happened and everything that ever will happen has been set in a perfect and un breakable sequence of causes and effects. Time is set in place. Now, if every decision of our life, from ice cream preference to political affiliation, was decided at the beginning of time, does that mean we don't have free will? I don't think so. Just because the universe knows what decisions we're going to make, just as it knows how the die is going to land, doesn't make those decisions any less our own. And you know what? I'm okay with being part of the universe.